Hey fellow game designers, my name is John, also known as Megahertz. Today I'm going to quickly cover the jump and double jump feature on the 2D player controller that I built from scratch using Bolt Visual Scripting with Unity. If you're interested in building a 2D character controller without code for yourself, this is actually part 5 of the series and there is a link in the description that will take you back to the start. If, however, you just want to implement a simple jump or double jump function in your existing controllers, as well as the animations using Bolt Visual Scripting with Unity, then let's jump right in. For this build, you're going to need to go ahead and build two super unit macros. The jump macro, which you may recognize from a previous video I made on the double jump feature. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the falling check super unit macro. Uh, just go ahead and pause the video now. Go ahead and build these two macros because I'm not going to be building them on screen. If this feels a little advanced for you or if you have no idea how to use Bolt Visual Scripting, go check out my channel and click on an easier project until you think you have the hang of it. Okay, let's begin. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to go to your player game object and add three new variables to your player. Uh, the first one is going to be a falling boolean. Uh, the second one is going to be a jump count integer. Go ahead and set that to two, or if you want it to have more jumps, three, four, depending on how many jumps you want it to have. Uh, and then jump force, go ahead and set that as a float and set it to 11. Next, you're going to go to your animator and you're going to go click on parameters and you'll click this button right here and add one more bool and call it falling. Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to edit, project settings, and then you're gonna go to input manager. Add one number to whatever this number currently is on your screen. If it's 30, make it 31. If it's 32, make it 33, so on and so forth. Go down to the very bottom and rename the last one that popped up. We're gonna name that jump. Um, if you uh, would like your jump to be spacebar, it needs to be a lowercase space. If you want it to be a different button, you're gonna have to figure out what that button is. Type it in right there. Uh, under type, uh, it's gonna be key or mouse button. Uh, on the axis, make it the X axis, and you should be set up and ready to go. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go back to your project settings and under the Physics 2D, you're gonna wanna go ahead and set your Y gravity to a negative 30. Now you might be wondering, why in the world are we doing this? Why wouldn't you just leave it uh, at 9.81 or negative 9.81? Well, um, I uh, as I started getting into game design, I actually went and bought all kinds of stuff that I didn't really need because I didn't know how to code. And so I just want to know how other people did it and implement things. This is the Corgi Engine 2D. You may be familiar with this. You might actually have this as well. Um, one of the things the owner of this engine, uh, creator of this engine, prides himself on is creating a very tight player controller. And I have to say, I agree with him. He sets his gravity to a negative 30. So you might be saying, well, that's not very realistic, John. Well, fine, but neither is a double jump. So, yeah. Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go into your animations and add two new animations. You're gonna wanna add jump and you're gonna wanna add fall. You should already know how to do that. If not, check out part four of this series. Your jump is gonna look like this and your fall is gonna look like this. I have both of the samples set to 10. So uh, that's probably where you're gonna need to set yours as well. Next, you're gonna go into your animator and we're going to create uh, a new substate inside of regular mode. So if you have base layer, you'll notice that uh, jump and fall have been added now. Just go ahead and jump those in, uh, drop those in regular mode. And we're going to create a new substate and we're gonna call this one uh, jump and fall. Let's see, jump and fall. Let's go ahead and drag both of those into jump and fall and then we're going to position those accordingly um, and we're going to drag this right here. Now I'm going to show you uh, all the transitions that you need to make. Okay, just to make this video just as short as possible and just to make sure I didn't miss anything, I went ahead and set up uh, transition settings for animations on a slide just to show exactly what you're going to need. You're going to need to walk to jump, jump to walk, walk to fall, fall to walk, so on and so forth. These are all of the booleans that you're going to need to set up on each one of the transitions. Z all of them have zero exit time and make sure that the offset is set to zero. Um, this should be exactly what you need. Just take your time. My advice is just go one at a time and pause the video now, making sure that you have everything that you need and then we'll move on. By the time you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this with each of these transitions set up like that. Um, and going up one layer, uh, I just put my jump and fall right here. So it's pretty clean. Um, okay, so moving on, we're actually gonna have to go and set up the bolt side of things. 
Okay, going back to our flow graph on our player, uh, you should see non-combat, master, and then right here, what we're going to do is we're going to drag in one of our two new macros. We're gonna drag in falling and put it right behind the sprint check because that always has a constant flow. We don't need another sequence there. We can just put it right behind this one. And for jump, what we're going to do is we're going to do um, on button down, is that right? On button input, right there. And then we're gonna type in jump, which we set up earlier in our uh, project settings there. Um, and we're going to run those together. Let me just very quickly uh, explain what these things are doing. So the fall check, what it's doing is it's saying, hey, is the player going down? So as the input comes in, it's checking this statement. Our velocity only goes less than zero on the y-axis when the player is moving down. So it's saying, hey, is it moving down on the y-axis? If it's true, then it's gonna set the object variable that we set up on our player right here. It's gonna set that to true. If it's not going down, then it's gonna set that to false. The same thing for our animator bulls that we set up right here. Um, it's going to set those up so that the animation will trigger as well. Going back to our jump super unit, uh, when we hit our jump button on the input, which we have set as spacebar, or at least I do, um, this is uh, what's going to trigger. So this is going to trigger saying, hey, are you grounded? If it is, then go ahead and set our jump count to two and uh, add force and then subtract one from the jump count. Uh, this part down here is saying if it's not grounded, then is the jump count greater than one, greater to or equal than one? If so, go ahead and jump. If not, don't do anything. So that's essentially how that works. So you should have a player controller that now is set up and let's check our animation. Just two quick things that I had to fix. Uh, first of all, the jump count and jump force, I had had a space in and they did not match my get variable. So I took those spaces out. The other part is um, on the jump, uh, animation when you double click that inside your animator just make sure that loop time is off everything else can loop but that does not need to sorry two more things uh, just really quickly if you have your jump count set to three here whatever this is set to this needs to be set to in your jump macro as well because if this is set to three then it's gonna give you three jumps the first time and then when you're grounded it's just gonna set it back to two so that needs to be the same number uh, you might also wonder why I didn't use a ray cast well, if you actually look at the player here if you use a ray cast and you just kind of scoot over to the edge it's going to do this about falling off uh, that ray cast will shoot down and it won't show you grounded anymore and even though you're standing on the edge it'll still look like like you're falling so right there um, we don't want him to look like he's falling one standing on the edge even though his one foot is kind of hanging off so that's uh, that's 2d platforming games for you all right your player controller should now be able to walk run jump and double jump with all the correct animations including the fall animation uh, if you ran into any trouble with this tutorial, I'll be happy to address any issues you might be having. Just hit me up in the Bolt Discord server. For the next video, we're going to start taking a look at something I'm really excited about, the wall jump feature of this player controller. So, hope to see you there.